The Gate Guardian is one of the most popular SCP-001 proposals, and for good reason. This entity is massive, it wields a fiery sword, and it can destroy almost anything. But where does the Gate Guardian originate from, and what is it protecting? In this video, we explore the Gate Guardian's origin. To begin with, let's quickly remind ourselves of his description. The Gate Guardian is a thousand foot tall humanoid located near the intersection section of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. This entity has a number of luminous, wing-like appendages emerging from its body, and it is holding a sword that emits super hot flames. But most notably, SCP-001 seems to be protecting a gate of immense proportions. Also, photographs have revealed that behind the gate, a pastoral grove can be seen, which contains numerous other entities of the same appearance and composition position as SCP-001, and finally, an apple tree as well as several fruit trees of unknown composition can be seen in the middle of the garden. Furthermore, the Gate Guardian is very effective at protecting, because anything that enters within one kilometer is immediately struck by his sword and obliterated from existence. And to top things off, every time the Foundation has tried to terminate him, SCP-001 has retaliated in a much more destructive way. For example, on one occasion, the agency fired a missile at his location, but the projectile was obliterated, and the launch site where the missile was fired from was also destroyed. And finally, when the Foundation tried to eliminate SCP-001 with an intercontinental ballistic missile, the Gate Guardian retaliated, causing a massive earthquake and tsunami. So, as we see, this entity entity is ridiculously powerful, and the nickname, the Gate Guardian, is quite appropriate, because 001 seems to be protecting some sort of gate. But who created the Guardian, and what exactly is he protecting? Well, if we look closer, we notice quite a few words in the description which relate to religion. For example, it is stated that all personnel who are responsible for the Gate Guardian's containment need to be in good relations with the Abraham fates. And if we research these fates, we find a good candidate for the Gate Guardian's identity right away. In Christian tradition, Uriel is one of the seven archangels that God created. He is the archangel of earth, and is said to stand at the Gate of Eden with a fiery sword. And of course, the Garden of Eden is the place where Adam and Eve lived before they ate the forbidden fruit. And finally, in the Bible, this fruit was also planted in the middle of the garden. So, as we see, the Gate Guardian's description seems to match that of Uriel quite well. Both SCP-001 and Uriel are standing in front of a gate. Both of them are holding fiery swords, and both are protecting a garden which contains a fruit tree. Also, in the Bible, it is stated that the Garden of Eden is located near the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, something which also matches the location of the Guardian's Gate. So, is the Gate Guardian Uriel? Well, it seems very likely, but if we read another document, we find contradicting information. Because in SCP-682's termination log, the reptile was tested with the Guardian, and the results were surprising. Upon entry, 682 is struck by the Guardian's sword, but it survives, albeit heavily injured. SCP-682 then begins crawling towards the Guardian, while saying, Is this meant to be the Garden? This is not the Garden. The Garden is far west of here. SCP-001 then strikes the reptile once again, but 6A2 survives once more. The reptile then says, Die, you command me to die. Oh, wouldn't we all like that? But this is my course for suggesting the fruit. The Gate Guardian strikes once more, but SCP-682 persists, and says, This is not the Garden and you are not your real pretender. And finally, SCP-001 strikes the reptile a final time, and 6A2 falls unconscious. And right after, personnel enter the 1 km boundary, and reportedly hear the words remove, which makes them collect 6A2's body. So, as we see, despite all the similarities we discovered, SCP-682 claims that the Guardian isn't Uriel. Instead, the reptile calls him a pretender 
Splendor and says that the real garden is located to the west. However, it is entirely possible that SCP-682 was trying to mock the Gate Guardian. After all, the reptile left and spat at 001. Not to mention that in the Bible, we find even more evidence. God drove out Adam, and at the east of the garden he placed the cherubim and a sword flaming and turning to guard the way of the Tree of Life. And just for context, the word cherubim refers to a winged angel that serves God and usually protects something important. So even if SCP-682 was telling the truth and the garden really is located to the west, then this isn't an issue because as we saw, God placed an angel to the east of the garden. And finally, the word cherubim is plural and as we saw in the gate guardian's description, it is stated that some Similar entities could be seen behind the gate. As such, despite of SCP-682's claim, all the evidence suggests that the Guardian really is Uriel. Alright, this is very interesting on its own, but what does it have to do with the Gate Guardian's origin? Well, it tells us that SCP-001 is protecting the Tree of Knowledge, and that the Guardian is an angel, a creation of God. But of course, there are many godlike creatures in the Foundation, so how can we tell which one created the Guardian? Well, in order to find out, we will have to read another document. The gate opens as an SCP tale, which showcases what SCP-001's XK class event will look like. The tale begins with an entity by the name of Yahweh, which awakens at Site 17. This entity then teleports to Site 0, the site where the Gate Guardian is located. The personnel at the site, some of which are asleep, leap to their feet. Even an O5 member, who is also present, staggers to his feet. Yahweh then says, the time has come, and he teleports to the gate. The gate guardian bows in front of him and lowers its burning sword. Uriel, says Yahweh, it is time. Open the gate, lead my armies across the earth. I hear and obey, my lord and my god. The gate begins to creak open, and behind it is an army of angels, thousands of bright creatures burning with pure light. They raise their white swords, singing a chant of war, and the rustling of countless wings fills the air. Yahweh then appears to the remaining members of the O5 Council, all at once, in 13 different locations. And all of the O5 members, even the non-believers, who think of him as nothing more than a reality bender with a god complex, have no choice but to listen. 13 people leap from their seats, from their beds, fall to their knees, trip and fall to the ground. Uriel, my servant, once told your founder to prepare for the great and terrible day of the Lord, Yahweh said in 13 different voices at once. This day now approaches. Make your final preparations. There is nothing else you will need to do but wait. My armies ride across the earth. Soon I will call the four horsemen. Once the last judgment has been unsealed, then shall the great and terrible day of the Lord come, and then all will have paradise. And finally, a bit later in this tale, Yahweh is identified as SCP-343. And just for context, in the Old Testament, the word Yahweh refers to God himself. So, as we see, according to this tale, 6A2 was mocking the Guardian, because SCP-001 really is surreal. And, of course, being an Archangel, the Gate Guardian was created by the omnipotent god of the Foundation, namely SCP-343. If you enjoyed this video, then go watch our SCP-2521 origin story video. And make sure to subscribe, so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.